It was well. rainy, in fact. 25-minute rain delay. Browns crew getting to work. And Jack McKeon. Jack McKeon's arguing with the umpires about the weather. What, you think they can control what I actually thought Pete Harness was going to have to sit too long? And, well, maybe Jack had a point. Raphael for call draws a walk as he's done quite well this season. The next man is Andrew Jones. That ball is marked for banishment and evicted from the house. Number 30 on the season for Jones. Two batters in. The Bravo's up 2-0. To Top two, Kevin Millwood against Dimitri Young. Oh, high cheese, and Millwood had it going on. That worked so well against Dimitri. Might as well try it against Casey. Four strikeouts for Millwood at this point. Bottom three is 2-0 for call against Harnish. Call causing Pete all kinds of trouble. That one right off his ankle. Harnish would hustle down, and for call would be called out for running inside that lane. Now the baseline. Harnish would be out with a contusion. X-rays were negative. We're all tied at two now in the top of the six. A man on for Sean Casey. Do you remember how that high fastball got by him? Well, that was a little lower. Andrew can't reel it in. Nobody will. Dimitri, he's not slow. He's just patient. He scores. It's a double for Casey. Reds up three. Too. The rain would continue in Atlanta. No, oh, that's nice. Scratching your back. Oh, up and in from John Rydling on Andrew Jones, hitting the shoulder. The next man would be Chipper. A couple of men on for Chipper. Chipper's really struggled with men in scoring position of late, batting under 200. In the situation, Dimitri Young is going to be back there to take one away from him. Chipper left five men on base on the evening. Bottom seventh, bases loaded, two outs. And here's Jones again. 240 for the season with runners in scoring position. That is ninth worst among National League regulars. And Scott Sullivan got him swinging, and the Reds win it by a count of four to three. And for the first time this late in the season since 1993, the Braves are out of first place. Of course, that season they rallied to win 104 games and edged the Giants who won 103. But few signs of that type of excellence right now. Kevin Millwood takes his 10th loss of the season, had one bad inning. Taking on the Padres, bottom one. Here's Sammy against Jay Witasik. He'll have a seat. 0 for 3 on the day. A couple of strikeouts coming off a two-home run performance. Top three, Ruben Rivera against Kevin Tappany. He'll pop foul, Willie Green. That's really getting it done. He's sticking the landing after the dismount. Top four, Cubs lead 3-0, Phil Nevin. Well, I guess Nevin was aggravated about having that 49-game on base streak stopped. His 30th home run, two-run shot. Padres trail 3-2. It's 3-3, top five. Potosic's at the plate. Men on first and third, a grounder. Willie Green, runner at second. Rivera beats it in there. It's safe. Potosic would leave the game suffering from heat exhaustion. Going to stay in the hospital overnight for observation. It's 6-4 pods in the fourth. Corey DeHaan hitting for Potosic and making it pay off his second of the year. Padres up 8-4. Here's Eric Young against Todd Erdos. And Damian Jackson flat out. Padres go on to win it. 11-5. Pods win the season series from the Cubs for the first time since 1995. I've been in August, going for six in a row. Bottom three, two on one out. The line to Shields will change up, and then Albert Bell sit on a potsy. A season high, eight Ks for Moeller, and he was out of the jam. Two on and one out before the two Ks. This is Mike Mussina, who hasn't gotten any help, and certainly Davy Cruz was not obliging. Solo job, his eighth, and the Tigers on top, one nothing. Now we're tied at one in the eighth. Juan Encarnacion. Making Buddy Groom down the line. Brad Osmus puts Detroit on top. Detroit would bust it open in the ninth. Osmus, a fly ball. Albert Bell is there. He didn't catch it. Two glove challenge. Damian Easley would score easily. The Tigers win it 6 1. They're 18 and 10 in August. They're at 500. Ball top one. What is it with railings on Thursday night? Oh. Diaz absolutely yeah, gets clonked. Down. Take another look at it if you must. Boy, he hit that railing hard. Right under the armpit. Top two, Ryan Sikorsky against Travis Fryman. Rangers lead 2-0, and right Fryman. It's deep, and it'll look as and if it went to Waco tomorrow. His 20th home run, game tied at two. Bottom seven, tied at six. Chad Curtis up there, doubling to right. Bring a run home. Rangers go on top 7 6. Bottom 8, it's 9 6. Luis Alasea. Alasea. He is a lumberjack and he's okay. A two run shot, fourth of the year. The Rangers, one through four hitters, were 16 of 19, scored 12 of the 14 runs.
Wilson on the mound looking for his first win since 1996. Todd Dunwoody miss. Wilson, three strikeouts and allowed one run, five hits. Bottom eight, Jason Tyner, Bobby Smith. One for his last 27, coming up with the clutch hit. Tyner going to score. Smith doubles. Devil Rays take a 2-1 lead. Top nine, Roberto Hernandez facing Joe Randa. Joe Randa. One, six, three double play, and the one barely getting in there. Nice tip job there. Next batter, Dunwoody. Remember, back to school time, get the kids those number two pencils. Devil Rays win a 2-1 after nine years and 927 minor league appearances. For San Francisco, yeah, top second, they have Kirk Reeder. Pitcher and hitter, Bloops one in front of Emil Brown. Ron Martinez, Felipe Crespo score, double for Reeder. Three zip Giants, part of a five-run inning. Let's go to the top of the third, five-nothing Giants. Jeff Kent, we know he's a hitter. Jeff Kent, 28 homers. Smells like 29. It's high, it's far, it's gone. 107 ribs now, 414 feet. We measured six-nothing Giants. Reeder, again, he's feeling like Willie McCovey. Slaps one the other way. And once again, Crespo will score. Doug Mirabelli score. It's 10 nothing Giants. Read a three for four. Four rips. Let's go bottom six. 10-2 Giants. Abraham Nunez fouls one. Off reader Armando Rios. Giving effort. Effort's the key to success, but look out for the bite. For the gate to the bullpen. Ouch. He's down and he's hurting. We take another look. Rios. Those things. They're not soft. Not fun to hit. Crashes into the fence. Left arm. Ouch. He would leave the game with a bruised arm, walked off on his own power, which is good. Giants win a 10-2. They take three full game lead over the Diamondbacks in the NL West. They take three or four from the Buccos. Just filling time until the sausage race. Third inning, Carlos Perez, Jeremy Burnett's. Jeremy Burnett's. Not hard, but effective. Tom Goodwin couldn't get there. Jeff Jenkins scores. Brewers up 4-1. Burnett's three for four. Matt Hurgis facing Louis Lopez with the bases chucked. The Bratwurst will score, the Italian Sausage will score, and the Brewers up 6-1. Lopez, three knocks and three RBIs. Fourth inning, Mark Loretta. Mark Loretta gonna get himself a base hit. No, he's not. Mark Grzelanek is there. It's 4-3 in the scorebook, but it is much prettier on television. Same inning, man on third. Burnett's gonna get him home. He was an all-star last year and finding the groove a bit in this game. Brewers go up 7-2 and win it by a count of 8-2. The beer makers post their first winning month of the season, 14 and 13. Jeff Jenkins, the elusive triple shy of the cycle, scored three times, though Paul Rigdon puts together his first two-game winning streak.